Hey everyone, welcome back. I have a really cool problem for you today, and it's partially based on my own work, just with a more fun context for this video. And it also helps to answer this very long debate, at least when I was in school, of should you use pencil or pen for your math exams? It seems like everyone has one opinion or the other. Let's say that we are running this experiment in a school full of 2,000 students. And so let's say that 1,700 of these students currently use pencil on their exams, and 300 use pen on their exams. We randomly split these students up into two groups of a thousand. The first group, which is the control group, we just let them keep doing what they're doing. We say if you're using pencil, keep using pencil. If you're using pen, you can keep using pen. In the other group, we force them to switch to pen for this exam, no matter what they are currently using. So all these students who are using pencil are forced to switch to pen. The students who are currently using pen in this group will continue using pen. And the question we will answer from the results of this experiment are, of those students who used pencil at first, so now we're just talking about the top row of students who used pencil at first, what is the average difference in score between these two groups of 850 students? And this is going to basically help us answer the question of, do the students do better, worse, or the same if they were originally using pencil and we let them keep using pencil versus if we make them switch to pen? But we made a huge mistake when we ran this experiment, and that huge mistake is that although we kept track of which column a student belongs to, so we know which group they were in, we forgot to keep track of which row they were in. In other words, we don't know what writing utensil they used at first, we only know what writing utensil they used during the test. And the reason this is such a big issue is let's look at each of these four groups and see if we can tell them all apart. This group of 850 students we can tell apart because they ended up using pencil on the test and we know they were in the control group, therefore they must have started using pencil in the beginning. This group of 150 students we know for sure because they used pen on this test and they were in the control group, therefore they must have initially been using pen. The issue is looking at these two groups. So these two groups, if you think about it, both of them would have ended up using pen on the exam because that's the group they were in. But we don't know which of these students initially used pencil and which initially used pen. So it kind of seems like we're stuck. Do we just have to rerun this experiment? The answer, using some clever but simple math, is actually no. And so let me switch over to this other sheet to finish the story here. Let's think about what measures we do reliably have access to. So we're going to start the story with this metric called mu switch. And mu switch is just going to be the mean or the average test score for this group of 1,000 students who were in the switch group. We do have this because we know all the students who are in the switch group. We did keep track of that. And so we're able to just calculate the average test score for all of these 1,000 students. So what is the average test score of these 1,000 students? Well, definition of an average, you just add up all 1,000 of their scores and you divide by 1,000. Why don't we break up this sum a little bit? We know since those 1,000 students, there was 850 who initially used pencil and 150 who initially used pen. So we can break up the sum just like that, still all divided by 1,000. Now let's get a little bit fancy with how we're factoring this. So basically we can spread the 1,000 into these two components and we can also divide the first guy by 850 by just putting an 850 up here. So you'll notice these two cancel out and then we're back up here. And we can do a very similar thing here just with 150. Now you might have already seen where this is going, but we're almost done. Let's give each of these quantities their own name. What is 850 over 1000? That's the proportion of students in the school who originally used pencil to begin with, right? Because 850 divided by 1000 is going to be the proportion of students who initially used pencil in the school. And so we'll call that P pencil. Now what is this guy here? What is the sum of SI over 850? That is the average test score for the students who are made to switch from pencil to pen, right? Because we're talking about exactly these 850 students, which are the students who are originally using pencil and made to switch to pen for this experiment. And so that is the quantity that we're actually after right now. So this is the unknown for us right now. Now 150 over 1000 is just the probability or the proportion of students who use pen. You can also just call that one minus P pencil and then this final one here, the sum of SI over 150, is going to be the average test score for this group of 150 students, who are the students who originally used pen, and they ended up being in this group, so they got to continue using pen. And so let's think about which of these are unknowns and which of them are knowns. So the beginning of this equation was up here. We have this for sure, as we said before. We have P pencil for sure, so this is good. We have P pen for sure. 
And so the only thing to stop us from just doing some simple algebra to solve for this unknown quantity that we're very interested in is do we know the average test score for people who were originally using pen and who are basically allowed to continue using pen? At first glance, it seems like no, right? Because we cannot tell these two groups apart. But we know something very powerful, which is that these 150 students were originally using pen and were allowed to keep using it. And these 150 students were originally using pen and also just allowed to keep using it. So there's no difference experimentally between these two groups. And therefore we can assume that the average test score should be the same between these two groups. So all we have to do now is calculate the average test score for these 150 students, who as we said before, we are able to distinguish pretty clearly. And we can just plug that in right here. And so we have everything we need. It almost seems like magic, but if we think about it now, we have this, we have this, we have this, we have this. So this just becomes a simple algebra equation we can solve for this unknown quantity. And so it may not be clear at first, but I just want to be very, very, very clear here that we still have no idea which students were in this 850 and which students were in this 150. I cannot point to any students and say confidently they were part of this group or this group. But by just doing this simple algebra here, we're able to get the average. We're able to figure out what the average test score would have had to be for these 850 students. And now we can answer this question here by just comparing that average to the average for these 850 students who, again, we are able to clearly distinguish. So I found this interesting. Hopefully you did too. If you did, please like and subscribe, and I will catch you next time.